good morning so in today's class we will look at the uh, some of the fundamental laws which govern convective heat transport and uh, we will try to derive uh, the first which is the continuity of mass or um, that is your conservation of mass or continuity equation so the three fundamental laws uh, which are uh, governing the convective heat transport are the law of conservation of mass which is your transport of mass which is also called as a continuity equation and uh, the transport of momentum which is nothing but uh, your classical Newton second law of motion which is also called the momentum equation momentum conservation equation and finally uh, for convective heat transport we will also look at the first law of thermodynamics applied to an open system which is called the conservation of energy or transport of energy so all these laws will be applied to an infinitesimally small control volume which is located in a moving fluid and uh, when you look at uh, uh, therefore when we define a control volume of course there are different approaches to solving these uh, governing equations either as treating the fluid as particles individually and tracking each of these particles and writing the Newton second law for the motion of the particles and the energy of the particle and uh, if you look at uh, the other approach which is called the continuum approach which we will be following in this particular lecture we define a control volume in a particular uh, in a moving fluid and uh, how we define continuum here is that if you plot uh, the ratio of uh, um, dens the mass by volume that is if you um, define density as mass by volume and then you uh, plot this ratio for different volume of the control volume that is for different delta v that is the different control volume sizes if you plot this below a certain volume which is maybe approximately about 1 micron cube you find uh, the plot of uh, density looks very distorted like you can see a lot of fluctuations in defining the value of density below this certain critical volume and if you use volumes which are greater or uh, which are larger than this critical volume and you calculate the ratio of uh, the mass divided by the volume that is you weigh the particles in that particular control volume divided by the volume that it occupies you find after that it, this becomes more or less uh, a constant okay so this sh signals that we have moved from a regime which is non continuum where you have few very few particles or a very small control volume where you could not statistically uh, define an average property such as density sufficiently where um, uh, your particle approach could be valid could be used whereas if you look at uh, uh, volume sizes which are greater than this critical volume uh, there the uh, density the, uh, the uh, definition of density carries a certain meaning and you find the density becomes a constant so therefore here the continuum assumption is definitely valid so we will restrict all our uh, derivation equations to a control volume which is satisfying a continuum approach once again we can define two kinds of a control volume so one um, where you fix the control volume uh, in space and then uh, you look at the transport of fluid across the fixed control volume and this is called the Eulerian approach which is uh, shown by the figure B here and the other approach where you look at uh, control volumes which are moving so in space and time so so this is called the Lagrangian approach um, um, of course each of them have their own uh, uh, advantages and disadvantages however the Eulerian approach is more conducive when you especially look at the comparison of your um, um, measured data with uh, whatever you have computed or whatever you have analyzed with your governing equations uh, so in the Lagrangian approach primarily the control volume is considered to be moving while the uh, with the fluid as a whole so you look at packets of uh, uh, fluid particles which are moving and you define a control volume which is basically uh, also moving with the fluid particles and in the Eulerian approach you assume a fixed uh, control volume in space and then you, as you see look at the motion of the fluid which is coming in and leaving this particular control volume so except uh, for dealing with certain types of unsteady flows the Eulerian approach is uh, basically generally preferred for because it is uh, 
um, generally simple to look at uh, and also co comparing your uh, uh, properties from uh, the solutions to equations in the Eulerian framework to measurements made with stationary instruments. Most of the times when we use stationary instruments like such as a pitot tube for measuring pressure or hot wire uh, for measuring your velocity or uh, using laser doppler or particle image velocimetry uh, so on. So we, look, we, we try to compute the velocity field or the pressure field at any uh, depending on a particular location. So, so these can be directly compared with the solutions of differential equation which are generally de derived using the, the, the fixed uh, uh, frame approach or the Eulerian approach. So therefore when we derive these governing equations we shall prefer using the combination of continuum and also the Eulerian approach. So the, I would like to acknowledge for uh, the introductory material uh, I have taken borrowed extensively from um, the open uh, textbook which is available online by Leonhard, John Leonhard of MIT. It is a heat transfer handbook and also Professor Date's lectures on convective heat and mass transfer which are also available um, and from M NPTEL. Uh, so he is a professor at IIT Bombay and uh, some of the illustrations also have used from his lectures. So, uh, so this is uh, to give you the basic introduction into the convective heat transfer. So today what we will do is uh, we will go uh, start with the derivation of uh, some of these conservation equations. Um, we will start with the continuity equation. So for deriving the uh, conservation equations first we will define the uh, control volume in space. So the topic will be conservation equations and we will first start with the derivation of continuity equation in Cartesian framework in your Cartesian coordinate system. So therefore we will first describe the Cartesian control volume in three dimensions. So you can look at a look, look at a control volume, a parallelopiped, for example. Uh, the origin will be from the the left corner, the left front corner here. So this is your x, y, and z, and the control volume sizes are in the x direction. Um, it has a dimension of delta x and y dimension it has a dimension of delta y and z direction delta z. So these are your dimensions of the control volume and this is your coordinate system. When we look at the continuity equation or the mass transport we have to look at for a fixed control volume what is the amount of mass which is coming in in a certain direction and the mass which is leaving in the same direction. So if you look at the mass flow rates for example the mass flow rate which is entering the control volume along the x direction that is from your left left end of the control volume. So the mass flux here will be uh, the mass flow th that is your density basically if you look at the uh, mass flow rate that is your density times the velocity into the cross sectional area here. The cross sectional area for this particular case is delta y times delta z. So that is rho a v. So that is your mass flow rate which is entering through the left control volume and in the x direction the mass flow rate which is leaving can be related to the mass flow rate which is entering the left control volume by means of Taylor series expansion. So this can be written as rho u delta y delta z plus d by dx of rho u delta y delta z into delta x. Similarly the mass flow rate which is entering the control volume from the bottom plane is rho v 
and sub multiplied by the cross sectional area which is delta x times delta z and the flow rate which is leaving the control volume from the top surface is rho v delta x delta z plus d by dy due to the gradient in the y direction rho v delta x delta z into delta y. So this is again by using the Taylor series expansion from the variable at this particular y equal to 0 you can write down what is the variable or the quantity at y equal to delta y using the Taylor series expansion. The same thing can be done in the z direction as well so if you look at the front phase the mass flow rate which is entering along the z direction in the front phase is rho w into delta x delta y and which is coming out of the rear phase can be written in terms of your Taylor series expansion plus d by dz of rho w delta x delta y delta z. So these are all your mass flow rates which are entering and leaving the control volume. Therefore we should first define the conservation of uh, mass so what we will say is that the change of mass inside the control volume should be equal to the mass which is coming in minus mass which is leaving the control volume. So that is the, the net change in the mass that is entering and leaving the control volume should be equal to the mass which is accumulating or which is depreciating in the control volume. Therefore if you look at the net uh, efflux of mass through the control volume boundaries or control volume surfaces which is basically your mass in minus mass out I can subtract in each direction in x direction for example the mass which is entering minus the mass which is leaving is minus d by dx of rho u del y del um, x and del z. So this is your mass flow rate net mass flow rate which is leaving in the x direction so to get the net mass which is leaving you have to multiply that over a time delta t so this gives you the net mass which is leaving along the x direction. So similarly you can write down the expressions for the, the net mass which is leaving in the other directions as well so along y direction so you have minus d by dy so you have mass coming in minus the mass which is leaving which is uh, rho v del x del z del y into delta t which will give me the mass so this is the flow rate multiplied by um, the time uh, over uh, duration over which you are monitoring the mass so that is your delta t so similarly your net efflux along z direction will be minus d by dz of rho w times um, delta x delta y delta z into delta t. So the change of mass inside the control volume will be if you look at the rate of change of mass so that is your uh, density times your control volume itself which is delta x delta y delta so this is uh, density times the volume which is the mass so the rate of change of mass which is happening and if you want to look at the change of mass so multiply it by the time duration delta t. So this is the change of mass inside the control volume and that should be equal to the net mass in minus mass out so therefore summation of all the mass flux mass effluxes in all the three directions so that should give me so d by d rho by dt into delta x delta y delta z delta t 
left hand side is equal to uh, minus d by dx of rho u uh, plus d by dy of rho v plus d by dz of rho w multiplied by delta x, delta y, delta z, delta t. So this is common for all the efflux in each direction so I am taking them out so you can cancel this straight away and this will give me my general form of the continuity equation in the Cartesian coordinate system. So in a coordinate free representation you can express you can instead of uh, deriving this for different coordinate systems you can write this in a coordinate free form as follows you can take the derivative with respect to time and write it as it is now the spatial derivative um, that is d rho u dx d rho v dy d rho v dz can be expressed as divergence operator operated upon rho v vector where v vector is basically ui plus vj plus wk in the Cartesian coordinate system. So therefore in a coordinate free representation you can express the continuity equation as uh, this particular form. So let us call this as equation 1 and this is equation 2. So therefore you can use the necessary divergence operator in any coordinate system whether it is Cartesian or cylindrical or spherical and expand it to that particular coordinate system that is one way of uh, simply writing down the equations in that particular coordinate system. Now what I am going to do is write down some simpler forms of the continuity equation making several approximations. So what we will we can do is we can also rearrange equation 1 in the following manner. So we can write d rho by dt plus we can expand the derivative of rho u we can split it up as u into d rho by dx plus v into d rho by dy plus w d rho by dz plus you can take essentially rho common and you can write this as du by dx plus dv by dy plus dw by dz is equal to 0 that means I am separating this into parts so I am writing rho into du by dx plus uh, du rho into dv by dy plus rho into dw by dz that is this term and the first uh, and the second third and fourth terms are basically coming from taking u out and writing this as u into d rho by dx plus v into d rho by dy plus w into d rho by dz. So now we can define what is called as a total derivative for any uh, variable for example phi you can write your total derivative d phi by dt now if your phi is a function of time and also your positions x y z you can expand this total derivative as in terms of partial derivative d phi by dt into dt by dt plus you have d phi by dx into dx by dt plus d phi by dy into dy by dt and so on in the z coordinate system. Now we all know that uh, dx by dt is nothing but the velocity in the x direction dy by dt is the velocity in the y direction and dz, dz by dt is the velocity in the z direction and this cancels off so therefore one way to represent a partial uh, derivative of phi with respect to t and in this particular form with respect to x, y and z is to use the notation of a total derivative. 
so that you can make the notation more compact and if you can see this particular form here so instead of phi we have rho and uh, other terms are similar to the terms here and therefore we can uh, write this equation as d rho by dt that is the total derivative of uh, density plus rho times um, du by dx plus dv by dy plus dw by dz which is equal to 0. So this again I can use the coordinate free format I can write this as divergence of v which is equal to 0. So I will call this as equation so these are different ways in which I can write the continuity equation. Now for steady flows if you are looking at flows where essentially you do not look at the change in any property like velocity or the density and so on so you can neglect the change with respect to time and therefore for steady flows you are left with the particular expression that uh, the divergence of velocity is 0 or the velocity is divergence free and whereas for incompressible flows you can go one step further and uh, you can also say that when you are looking at incompressible fluids where the density change is not much or incompressible flows where your density variation is not much because of very low Mach numbers. So in such cases for incompressible fluids and incompressible flows since your density is invariant you can assume density is constant and in that case also even, even if the flow is unsteady the derivative with respect to uh, the, the total derivative will be 0 because the density is invariant of space and time and in that case also you get the expression that your velocity is divergence free okay or in rectangular coordinates this means du dx plus dv dy plus dw by dz is equal to 0. So this is your incompressible form of the continuity equation this is your incompressible continuity equation. If uh, you are looking at um, compressible continuity equation but in steady flow then you neglect this uh, um, derivative with respect to time and then this becomes your del dot rho v equal to 0 be becomes your compressible continuity equation. okay so this is so far whatever we have done is all in one coordinate system which is the rectangular coordinate system one one way of writing this in other coordinate systems is to simply replace this divergence operator by the respective divergence operator in that coordinate system and get the equation in that coordinate system we can also do from starting from fundamentals we can derive the continuity equation in the other coordinate system I will just uh, do this derivation in the cylindrical coordinate system for continuity to give you an example so let us define the control volume for the cylindrical coordinate. So in this case we will take a, a, a cylinder a fluid volume which is in the form of a cylinder and this is your axial direction z you can have radial direction r and of course variation in theta direction so this is your cylindrical coordinate system let us chop off a particular um, control volume.
a particular control volume like this and we will look at that control volume in detail. So here we look at a sector again and uh, maybe I should draw this in a much clearer manner, I will try to use another chalk. So this is this particular control volume and I am going to take a sector of this and join this sector right here. So now you have the three directions, this is your Z direction and this is your theta direction right here and this is your radial direction, okay. So therefore uh, we will start from the bottom, the coordinate system can be assumed to start from the bottom right here, this is the, your origin. Now the first thing that we are going to do is write the differential areas in each of the directions because unlike the Cartesian coordinate system it is not uh, explicitly seen what is the differential area, so therefore we will first uh, write it down, the differential area in the Z direction that is your DAZ if you look at either the bottom surface or the top surface we want to look at the shaded region here. So this shaded region here is your the top and the bottom areas is your DAZ. So if you say that this is your radii R and this is your radii R plus DR. So this is essentially the shaded area here is basically the area of the sector of radii R and the area of the sector R plus DR if you subtract these two areas you get the resulting differential area of DAZ. So that is the area of the sector which is enclosed by the radii R plus DR will be R plus DR the whole square into D theta, okay. Similarly the area of the sector enclosed by the radii R will be R square D theta, so you subtract these two that gives the differential area between R and R plus DR. So if you neglect the higher order terms you can cancel off R square D theta, half R square D theta minus half R square theta and you have um, 2 R DR divided by 2, so that is basically R DR D theta and you have DR square D theta, so that is a very small term considering that these are all differential um, elements, so therefore we can neglect the higher order terms and we can approximate your DAZ in terms of uh, the dimensions as R DR D theta and uh, so we, this is coming out of neglecting your higher order terms. And similarly the variation with respect to theta direction that is if you, if you look at the region which is shaded in red, so that is your theta, the one which is left this is basically this, the other one is this, so therefore in this particular case you can write this as DZ into DR because this is essentially DZ and this is basically DR, so this can be written as DZ times DR and finally coming to the differential area in the radial direction, if you look at the differential area at the bottom, uh, so if you, if you look at the differential area of this, the one which I am highlighting in white, so this is uh, corresponding to DAR which is entering and the other which is uh, leaving is essentially this bigger one right here. So the one which is leaving, so therefore the one which is entering 
the differential area here will be basically r d theta into d z r d theta into d z because the area of this particular sect the length of the sector is basically r d theta times d z will be the area of this and the differential area in the radial direction which is leaving out here will be r plus d r into uh, d theta into d z r plus d r into d theta into d z. So now we can write the uh, mass efflexes which are coming in each direction in the um, uh, z, z, uh, axial direction or the z direction which is colored by the uh, violet color here in the bottom plane the mass uh, fl uh, flow rate is basically rho into vz into the differential area of this the one which is exiting out here will be rho vz plus d by dz of rho vz into uh, dz into daz this is by Taylor series expansion similarly the if you look at the mass flow which is entering this particular phase along the theta direction this is rho v theta into da theta the one which is leaving in the theta direction from the Taylor series expansion we can write this as rho v theta plus d by d theta into v theta into um, da theta into d theta and if you look at the um, flux mass mass flow which is entering in the radial direction so this is uh, rho into vr and this is entering through the differential element uh, dr da r in and the one which is exiting in the radial direction by Taylor series expansion will be rho vr plus d vr by uh, dr into d a r in um, into uh, d r so this will be in terms of uh, um, d a r out here okay so because this is corresponding to the cross sectional area of uh, the uh, radial uh, plane uh, the plane in the radial uh, direction which is uh, through which the mass flow rate is leaving and therefore now we will apply the uh, conservation of mass um, and we will express the net efflux of mass first the net efflux of mass in all the directions so we will add them together so along the z direction you have rho v z uh, rho v z into d a z d a z we already know is r d theta uh, r d r into d theta minus uh, the flux which is leaving in the z direction from the top which is rho v z plus d by d z of rho v z into d z into r d r d theta so this is r d r into d theta so once again I should be multiplying this entire thing by d a z here and similarly um, just a small correction I will be writing this as d theta and multiplying this entire thing as d a theta and uh, 
so this also rho vr into dr into dar out okay so this is the net deflex of mass in the z direction so that plus the net deflex of mass in uh, the theta direction will be rho v theta into delta z dz dr minus rho v theta plus d by d theta into rho v theta into d theta into dz dr plus the net deflex of mass in the radial direction which is rho vr into r d theta into dz minus rho vr plus d by dr of rho vr into dr multiplied by r plus dr into d theta dz so i am multiplying everything by their corresponding uh, areas and this is your net deflex of mass coming from the control volume surfaces so according to the continuity of mass this should be equal to uh, the change of mass inside the control wall so we can write the change of mass so within the control volume so all of this can be multiplied by delta t so this will give the change of mass uh, that is the mass uh, coming in minus mass going out the change of mass will be the mass flow rate uh, which is accumulating or uh, which is uh, uh, deteriorating over time multiplied by the time step that will give me the change of mass inside the control volume that is d rho by dt into the control volume here uh, if you look at this will be um, dz into uh, dz so this will be the total volume differential volume of this control volume already we have seen dz is r dr into d theta so therefore the entire control volume will be r dr d theta into dz multiplied by dt or delta t will give me the corresponding change in the mass okay so now you can knock off the common terms uh, if you do that you will end up with the final expression which will be d rho by dt plus d by dz of rho vz plus 1 by r d by d theta into rho uh, v theta plus vr by r plus d by dr of rho vr this is equal to 0 so we can also write the last two terms together as 1 by r d by dr of r v r r into rho v r so this is therefore your generalized continuity equation in cylindrical coordinate system so basically coming out of balancing the mass fluxes going in all the directions uh, through the control volume surfaces to the change of mass within the control volume so if you simplify knock off all the common terms and neglect all the higher order terms the terms which are very small so then you end up with this particular equation once again for incompressible flows if you neglect the density variation with respect to time and space then this will reduce to uh, dvz by dz uh, <coughs> plus 1 by r dv theta by dr d theta plus 1 by r d by dr of r vr is equal to 0 so this is your incompressible form of continuity equation in the cylindrical coordinate system okay so um, similarly if you uh, you can uh, do the derivation in the spherical coordinate system as well although a little bit tedious because you have curvature uh, in all the 
um, uh, three coordinate axis you have a, a radial system there you have a polar angle and you have the azimuthal angle all the three of them uh, coming into picture and becomes a little bit more rigorous however you can still express uh, all of them as a divergence free operator and you can uh, substitute the appropriate uh, divergence operator in that coordinate system to get the equations. So in the next class so we will stop here for today um, the next class will start uh, will continue our derivation of the momentum and the energy equations okay so for the momentum equation it is straightforward once you write your uh, control volume you have to write down all the forces acting on the control volume and the flux of momentum which is entering and leaving the control volume so we use the Newton's law and uh, we balance all the forces to the fluxes of momenta and that gives you the momentum equation and similarly we uh, we have to do the energy equation derivation which is a little bit more rigorous so we, we will uh, do this in the next subsequent uh, two lectures okay thank you.